Conversion tracking is one of the most important parts about paid media to prove the value you're getting from a specific channel, and Quora Ads is no exception. The easiest way to track conversions in Quora Ads is to use confirmation URLs, or thank you pages. That is, a user will perform a specific action, and then after they perform the action, you send them to a specific page that they could only get to by doing that specific action. Well, not all websites are set up that way, where they can use confirmation URLs. Sometimes you have to set up event tracking conversions, and Quora Ads has those too. So in this video, we will cover how you can set up both the URL-based conversions as well as event-specific conversion actions using Google Tag Manager. Before we can start setting up our conversions within Quora Ads, we need to make sure that the pixel is on our website. So you see within the top navigation, there's an option for pixels and events. We see the default events you can create that can help you look at specific conversion actions. And we'll get to that. But first, we need to head over to the blue button to set up the pixel. And we see that there are two options to install the Quora Pixel. The first one is to install it manually. Quora will give you the HTML code that you need to put within the head tags on every page of your website, or at least the ones that you will want to track. If I go down and click Next, you do have the option to start setting up events here as well, but this is also going to be manual. And to me, it's a lot more work. So I'm going to head back, head back again, and I'm going to choose my preferred option, and that is using a partner. From my experience, I have only used Google Tag Manager, and that is what I'm going to use in this demo to show you how to set up the pixel as well as conversion events. So I'm going to hit next, and what's blurred out here is your pixel ID. I'm going to leave this open, and then I'm going to hop into Google Tag Manager. In our case, if I scroll down, we've had the Quora pixel on our website for a long time. But if it's new to you, you would just need to go in and create a new tag. In Tag Configuration, you can scroll all the way down, and eventually you will find a native option to install the Quora pixel. There also is the magnifying glass up here. You can just search for Quora, and it'll show up. But this is the official one from Quora, so make sure that you are using this one. And the first field we will need to fill in is the Quora Pixel ID. So we will head back to Quora. If I just highlight over the Pixel ID, you see it says Copy to Clipboard. So I'm just going to click on it and then head back to Google Tag Manager. And then I'm going to paste in the Pixel ID. For now, I just want to get the Pixel on the website to track all of the page views that we get. We want to set up the pixel as an all page view option to make it a lot easier to set up any URL based conversion actions. So I'm going to leave the event type as page view and then come down to triggering. After I open up that one, I want to choose all pages. Before I could save, submit, and publish the tag, I would have to enter a name, but I'm not going to do that since we already have it set up within this account. Let me close out of this. Don't want to save it. We'll create a new one soon, but let's head back into Quora. The easiest way for me to know that the Quora Pixel is working is to head up to Audiences. I typically create a basic retargeting audience looking at all site visitors, collecting users who have visited any page on my website where I have the Quora Pixel, and once I start to see an audience being built, then I know the base pixel is working. If you really want to be thorough, after you set up the Quora Pixel within Google Tag Manager, you can look at it in preview mode, visit your website, and see if the tag fires in preview mode before you publish. It's most likely going to be a quicker result for you to know that it's working instead of waiting for an audience to be built, but you do have options. So then if I'm going back to pixels and events, if you have a URL based conversion, you can look at creating an event. So first we'll want to name our event. Then you can choose your category and there's a few different options from pretty generic stuff. So I'm just going to say generate lead. And then we see the URL event. The options are URL contains, URL doesn't contain, or URL equals. Depending on how the URLs are structured for your confirmation pages, choose the option that's best for you, and then enter in the portion of the URL that you would like to track as a goal. And one part I did mention is that it does force you to add in a description. I just had to add in something there just so we can save it. And then we can create the event. So then if I scroll down, we see there is the event that we created. I still call them goals, pretty much the same thing. And there we see this is a custom option. All of the custom goals are going to be URL based. Now, as I said in the intro, not every website has URL based conversion actions that they can track. So then you have to go to event tracking. And here we see the standard options. Something as simple as adding payment info, adding to the cart. Yes, you can create audiences off of these to use for retargeting within Quora, but they could be good actions for you to also track for higher level conversions. There's purchases, someone searching on your site, and even just a generic action. I have not used app installs with Quora, but I believe if you do app install campaigns, 
it's going to pull in the third party app tracking information. So nothing that you can really do to set up there manually. But let's look at setting up one of these actions in Google Tag Manager that we can start tracking as a goal. So I'm gonna hop back into Tag Manager. Let's create a new tag. And since I haven't created any event-based actions within our Tag Manager yet, I'm actually gonna save this one. So first I will need to name it, otherwise I won't be able to save it. Pay something in there, tag configuration. We will need to choose Cora again. So I'm just gonna scroll down until I see it. And once again, we will need the pixel ID. If you already have it saved, it's easy to paste in, but of course I didn't save it down. So I'm gonna head back up, look at my pixel setup, click on partner, copy it again, paste it in here. But then this time, I'll wanna change the event type. So instead of page view, you will wanna choose one of the actions that makes sense. You can see for anything e-commerce related, there's some pretty straightforward options. However, I haven't used Quora for e-commerce in a long time. A lot of mine are lead gen. Because I think Quora is a great platform for lead gen, especially with the lead gen ads. If you're curious about that, you can watch that video here. So we can see I named this specific event video views, but there really isn't anything here. So I'm just going to choose generic, and then I'll just remember myself that this generic event type is for the video views event. If you're looking to create multiple events, maybe separating out a few different forms on your site, you see that they don't have options for contact us, get a demo, that whole sort of thing. So honestly, I just choose some of these other options, even though the names of them don't match maybe the form actions on my site, and then just keep track of which event type I'm choosing for each form. It's not ideal, but it's still fairly easy to do. So as I leave it as generic, then I want to choose my trigger. This video is supposed to be just about event tracking and Quora ads, so I'm not going in depth about all the types of triggers that you can create within Google Tag Manager. A trigger is telling Tag Manager when to fire off this specific event action. So I already have a trigger that records a variety of different YouTube view actions, but there are other triggers that you can create. If I show you some options for when people click on certain elements, maybe specific button clicks. You can create triggers of fire when people click on certain links, maybe external links, or maybe a click to call button. You can fire a trigger when a form is submitted or when a certain element becomes visible on the page. It's pretty easy to Google how to set up certain triggers depending on what action you want to track within Google Tag Manager. But for this one, I will choose the YouTube views option and we do have a video of how to set that one up here. And then I'm going to save this tag. As I mentioned before, you can preview the tag to make sure it's working before I submit and publish it. I have the URL pasted in here. So let's connect to the tag assistant. And the tag assistant opened up my website and we see the little preview down here confirming that it is connected to preview mode. Now the event I want to track for Cora is going to be video views. So I'm going to select play on a few of these. So now let's head back to Tag Assistant. If I click continue, we see that the Cora video views event was fired eight times. First I played a video four times and then I paused it four times. That's all part of the way I have the trigger set up. If I only wanted to track when a video was played, I'd have to go and update my trigger. But for the sake of this video, really don't care too much. But I can see that the way I have the trigger set up, it is working. So I can head back to Tag Manager. I want to submit this tag, add in my version name, and then publish. So now I'm going to have to let a little bit of time pass by, make sure some video events happen on our website, and then we'll hop back in to Cora Ads and check in on the generic event. And it took about 30 seconds for me to go back to the website, click play on a video once again, and then hop back into Cora Ads. And right away we see the generic tag that I used to set up the video views action is marked as active and there's one recorded event within the past 15 minutes. So now I know that this specific event action is working and you'll be able to do that for whatever event name that you choose to use. If I wanna see that my custom event is working, let me head to that specific thank you page URL on our website. There we see it, pretty easy to do. Sorry for all the jumping back and forth, but we're gonna head back to Cora. I'm gonna click refresh we see that the URL based event that was a custom event that we created is also active with a trackable event occurring within the past 15 minutes. So now I know that the setup I used is working. I can then go back up and create as many URL based actions as I want, as well as the standard event tracking that Cora offers. It is so easy to do within Tag Manager. Now, after you have gone in and created your events, you can start seeing these events within your reporting. So I'm gonna go back up to manage ads, and this is our account that we use for just research with clients and to do these demos so we don't have any client actions in here, but we can update the columns within your campaign reporting. 
To do that, you need to head to this little circle icon right here, and I honestly don't know what to call it. To me, it looks like the different levers on a soundboard in a recording studio. But you'd want to open this, and here's where you can configure your columns. If you scroll down, you will see there are options for each standard event action. But we also see on the very bottom, as you create your custom events, Cora will add column options for every single custom event that you create. So then I could click on the drop down for each option that I want, and then every single event action will have these options. Similar to LinkedIn, you can look at click through conversion actions as well as view through conversion actions. There's an option for cost per click through conversion actions, gonna be a little bit more specific, but then the cost per total conversion is going to include both your click through and your view through conversions. And then the overall conversion rate will also include your click through and view through conversions. And then to see the video view actions, I would just need to head up to generic conversions because that is the event type we used in Google Tag Manager and add in whatever columns I want. And those are gonna be the options for every single event type. Hit apply to update your columns. And then as you start running your campaigns, you'll be able to see your custom conversion actions depending on which events that you created or used that Cora offers. And once again, that is how easy it is to set up conversion actions within Cora ads. Whether you use URL-based conversions or you need to set up event tracking, you do have a way to record those events and feed them back into Cora ads. Even if the standard naming conventions for the event types aren't ideal, you could still use them to track important actions. And I wanna come back on app install conversion actions. If you're looking for more information on how app installs work for Cora ads, you can visit this link right here. I know I didn't mention anything earlier, but at least wanna give you the location to go and the page to visit where you can find the information and research it yourself. If you have any other questions, on how to set up the conversion action that you're looking to track within Cora ads, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.